If you're looking to apply for an international teaching or admin position, you will need to describe your qualifications, experience, and skills in detail. The best way to do this would be to create a comprehensive multi-page document known as a curriculum vitae or a CV. This has traditionally been the accepted way to apply for a job in academia. A professional CD is different from a resume. While a resume is expected to be just one to two pages long, CVs typically start at three pages and their final length will depend on your years of experience and number of qualifications. You may find it interesting to know that the word resume is French for summary, while curriculum vitae is Latin for course of life. And so, while a resume aims to be a summary of your experience, giving you a professional identity, a CV provides a detailed breakdown of all of your accomplishments as a teacher, scholar, and or administrator. This means your curriculum vitae should include all of your teaching and research experience, all credited publications, awards and prizes you've received, honors, and any other affiliations and credentials. There is no one single way to organize and format this information. Ideally, you should obtain a copy of your academic supervisor's CD and use that as a framework on which to build yours. There is, however, a basic outline you should follow, which we will now discuss. Every CV should start with your name and contact information. Your contact information should include an email you check regularly, a phone number with a voicemail enabled, and a mailing address. You should also clearly state either your current or prospective job title, placing it near the top of your CV under your name, for example. Next, you should provide a detailed breakdown of your academic qualifications and work experience. Your academic qualifications should include all of your degrees, including the ones you're currently working towards. For each degree, you should include the title of the degree, the awarding institution, your major or majors if you have more than one, any grades you received and the date your degree was awarded to you. If you completed a thesis or a research project as part of the degree, then make sure to include that too, along with the name of your supervisor and their contact details. Next, include all teaching, research, lab, and administrative experience as part of your work experience, mentioning key accomplishments first, and then providing a description of your day-to-day -day activities in each role. When describing the day-to-day -day activities for each role, consider using these two principles, gapping and parallelism. Gapping refers to the use of bullet points over paragraphs to pull in key ideas apart and present your responsibilities and abilities as clearly as possible to the reader. It's also important to keep your verb choices consistent throughout your CV. This is known as parallelism. This consistency will assist the reader to form relationships between your words and sentences, improving readability and fluency. Once the section with your work experience is complete, you should state your current research interests and include a list of all of your publications, presentations, and any other papers published under your name, including grants you've received or are currently applying for. The next section of your CV highlights the characteristics which make you a unique candidate for this position. These will include the languages you speak, the memberships you have with professional organizations, honors, awards, and detailed examples of occasions where you demonstrated leadership, communication, and other valuable skills. 
Finally, include a list of all of the computer programs that you can use, mentioning any certifications or training you have received. Remember that this is by no means a comprehensive list of everything you should include in your CV. It's merely the bare minimum. If you're applying for different positions or the same position, but at different institutions, you may also wish to create different versions of your CV, each tailored to the specific application that you're making. At this point, it may seem like you're expected to include just about everything and anything in your curriculum vitae. However, hold on a minute because there are some details which you should almost definitely not include. These details include your age, your date of birth, ethnicity, religious and political affiliations, sexual orientation, marital status, place of birth, and any personal medical information. You should also not include any personal photographs, especially when applying for a position in the United States, United Kingdom, or Australia. Standards may change over time. However, it's always safe to follow what the current standards are. Including these details will not only make your CV seem unprofessional, but may also prove to be a liability to your application. It's recommended that you use a word processing application like Microsoft Word to type out your CV. The most common fonts used are Times New Roman, Havelica, and Arial. Though you are also free to use something else more suited to your tastes, so as long as it's readable. Again, it's always safe to stick with what's standard. To ensure your text is readable, choose a font size no smaller than 10 points, but no larger than 12 points. Sparse use of boldface, italics, and underlining is also encouraged. To draw the reader's attention to specific words or key phrases on the page and make your CV visually appealing. Moreover, there are five key principles you should follow when writing a CV for academia. The text should always be clear, meaning your thoughts and ideas should be well organized. It should also be concise, only include relevant information and avoid repetition. Keep your styles and fonts consistent and your CV current, meaning your CV should be up to date and include the most recent work experience and qualifications. Finally, your CV should be complete, providing the reader with a full picture of your abilities. You can refer to these as the five C's of CV writing. When it comes to choosing a layout for your curriculum vitae, there is a lot of inspiration to be found online. Though, whichever layout you eventually decide to use, remember that your priority is to present the information in your CV both clearly and professionally. In other words, don't choose something just because it looks good. When you're finally done writing your CV, you should try and obtain feedback from a supervisor, careers officer, or a colleague and make some final adjustments. Bear in mind that while colors may look good on the screen, departments will often print and photocopy your CV in black and white, which may result in your CV looking illegible and faint. Therefore, use colors wisely confirming that your CV is readable, even if printed in black and white. Adobe PDF files are the most widely accepted format for electronic submissions. This should therefore be the format you export your CV into. It's recommended that the file size be no more than two megabytes as that tends to be the size limit for PDF attachments on many of the websites you will be sending your application through. 
Sometimes you may need to submit a hard copy of your CV. If that's the case, print this copy out on standard white, ivory, or neutral heavyweight paper. You may use a home inkjet or laser quality printer as most will definitely deliver good quality. One thing you should avoid, however, is printing your CV on both sides of the paper. While it may be environmentally friendly to do so, departments may omit the photocopying of the back side of your page of your CV when making copies for themselves. So just something to consider. I hope you found these tips to be helpful. Remember, this is just one of many guides you can follow. Be sure to check out my additional resources to support you on landing your high-paying international job. Best of luck on your search!